<laughs> I didn't know you guys had that much fun in the bullpen. <laughs> I tell you, you know, Johnny, that it's not like that. It's not all fun and games down there. It's just like sitting on the bench. You got to be prepared at all times. Is that like you got to believe? That's right, Kate. You got to believe in this little white demon, because when you grip it a certain way, it'll do exactly what you want it to do. Come here, I'll show you. See, particularly now, you want to throw a fastball, and you want to throw it straight. So you hold it across the seams with your fingers like that. No matter what position you want to play, you throw the ball across the seams and it'll go straight for you. And you can hold a change up that way, too. Tug, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What's a change up? Well, it's uh, nothing shaking but the bacon, nothing cooking but the beans on the pot, and ain't cooking because the water ain't hot. It's the same old soup, it just can't warming it up. <laughs> Great question. A change up is a pitch that you hold and you do your wind up and you throw it and you make it look just like it's going to be a fastball, only they call it changeup because you take some speed off. You change up on it, and it goes slower, and it tricks the hitter. He swings before the ball gets there. You know right, Johnny? Pitcher winds up just as hard as he can. The same way he's going to throw the fastball, he throws it just like the fastball. He releases it, but for some reason, it just sort of gets out there and just stops. It's a great pitch if you can do it. There's no better pitch than a good fastball and a great changeup. Change up is a super pitch. Isn't that right, John? Well, if it's a good fastball and it's a good change, that's all you need. Let's see some of your stuff. Bunch, stand over there. We got a little business to all take right, care of. All right, all right. I'm ready. <laughs> well, I guess my change up didn't fool you that time, huh, Johnny? Change up. I thought that was your Peggy Lee fastball. Is that all there is? Then let's keep swinging. Is that all there is? Then let's keep swinging. <laughs> now pitching for the baseball bunch, number 45, Tug McGraw. OK, Michelle, the joy ride's over. It's time to start getting serious now. This is where everything important begins. Because a relief pitcher, when we get into a game like this, there's usually men on base. That's why they call for a relief pitcher. My jacket, please, chicken man. And my glasses, please. Thank you. <clears throat> now, when we get to this part of the game, it's time to get real serious, you see. Because when we come into the ball game, there's usually players on base, runners on base. And that means there's trouble, man, like big trouble. So the responsibility of a relief pitcher is to come in there and throw strikes. You gotta throw strikes. You don't wanna walk any more runners on base than are already there. I've seen so many little league games where the pitchers are so wild, they keep walking guys and walking guys and walking guys, and they never throw strikes, and the score is 20 to 19, and nobody's hit the ball yet. So what we have to do is remember to throw strikes. The most important pitch in baseball is a strike. Now, you might wonder, what is a strike? Uh, it's when the batter swings and misses. That's right. Let's try it and see what happens. See if we can get one past the chicken. Give me a kiss for good luck. Okay, that was fine. We got that one fine. Now, there are other kinds of strikes. What would another kind of strike be? Um, a foul ball. Foul ball? Same as a chicken dance? Come on, chicken dance. Chicken is a foul. Dance is a ball. Foul <laughs> ball. Hmm. Okay, yeah. let's let's see if we can get a foul ball this time. Another kiss for your mother. Foul ball. We're really in the flow now. If he swings and misses, strike. If he fouls it off, strike. What happens if he doesn't swing? Uh, that means the ball's over the plate. Right. Now we got two strikes on him, and we're hot. Right. And we got two kisses. Let's have a third kiss for the third strike. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that ought to get him. That is a winner. What are you talking 
arguing about chicken? Do you have any idea what you're talking about? Why are you arguing with me? He could get thrown out of the game, Bunch. We're just arguing about a ball and strike. What if you got thrown out of the game, chicken? Would you be helping the team at all? We may need you in a ninth inning rally. Do you know what a ball and strike is? Well, look get over here in the box. Just get over here right now. All right, Bunch. Now, the armpit is the top of the strike zone, right here. Or wing pitch in your case, chicken. Oh, it's really that bad, I'm sure, too. The bottom of the strike zone is right here, at the knees. Good knees, chick. All right. Now you got an idea where the strike zone is? Also, that's the height. That's the lowest part of it, too. The width of the plate, the white part of the plate, is the width of the strike zone. All right, you got the highs and the lows and the width. All right, Tugger, you're always talking about your control. Throw some in here. All right. Now let me show you something. Chicken, let Freddie be the hitter. All right. Come on, Freddie. All right. What's wrong here? The chicken strike zone is too high for Freddie. He'd be a sitting duck up there. That's right. Obviously, the chicken strike zone and Freddie's are different. So we need to make some adjustments, right? here and right here all right now each hitter's strike zone depends on his natural stance let's look at some hitters and their strike